Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Mitchell and just come with me. Let's take a trip down memory lane. So we may or may not all remember about a year and a half ago, Siri released their 50 millimeter anamorphic lens. This was the first of their anamorphic lens lineup and it was the first of bringing anamorphic lenses to the consumer market and making them super affordable. So you don't have to spend like $30,000 on a lens. For their first go at anamorphic lenses, they decided to do a 50 millimeter focal length, which was great. And we have been using this lens for the last year and a half and have been very, very impressed with it. Then they decided to kind of take it another step further, add another lens to the lineup and include the 35 millimeter. Now this is just a little bit wider, so you can kind of film in those tighter spots, just giving us another lens we can shoot with as well as giving another focal length option. Then, Siri released again another lens, which was the 24 millimeter anamorphic lens. This is even wider for again, shooting in those even tighter spots, just as good as the other two, just wider and kind of starts filling out this entire anamorphic lens lineup. Now today they've done something that it, I mean was expected, but also quite impressive. They released the 75 millimeter anamorphic lens. This is new as of today, so you can go out and order it if you are interested. And this finally kind of rounds off the entire anamorphic lens lineup. So you got yourself a 24, also a 35, and then a 50, and then a 75. So you kind of cover all of those focal lengths. Now, because we are in the unique position of actually owning all four of these lenses, we have the ability to kind of review each one and tell you guys that if you were to only buy one or two of these, which one should you get? Because each lens does kind of have its unique characteristics and they're not all exactly the same. So today we're gonna go through each lens and kind of give you a bit of insight as to which one is right for you. First things first, we're gonna be going through the physical appearance of each of these lenses. And first off, let's go through the size. So you guys can probably see here, the 50 millimeter is the smallest of the bunch, then followed by the 35, then the 75, and the largest being the 24. Now with this being the largest lens of the bunch, it isn't a large lens. It fits quite nicely in the palm. And when you compare it to a 24 to 70 from Sigma, it is, it's pretty much exactly the same height, but it is much skinnier. So it's the biggest of the bunch, but definitely not a big lens by any means. All of these lenses have a 67 millimeter filter thread, except for the 24. Because the 24 millimeter is a bit bigger of a lens, it has a 72 millimeter filter thread. All of the lenses have very similar build quality. They're all all metal design. And also they feature a D-clicked focus and aperture ring. So you can turn them quite smoothly. The minimum aperture of of each of these lenses is 1.8, except again for the 24 millimeter, that has a minimum aperture of 2.8. We'll talk about that in more detail a little bit later, but just something to be aware of. Next up, we're gonna move on to prices. Now the price of these lenses does fluctuate a little bit. So the 50 millimeter is the cheapest of the bunch at $699. Then you're gonna move on to the 35, which is $799. Then the 24 is the most expensive at $999. And then the 75, the new one that has just been released today, this one is coming in at an early bird price of $669, but that is 25% off. So normally it's gonna be around $900. So if you are interested in getting the 75 millimeter, now is probably the time because you do get a bit of a discount on it. Next up, we're gonna be moving on to the flares. So the lens flare, that these lenses offer, which is probably one of the main selling points of why someone would even wanna buy one of these lenses. So I find that these lenses tend to really thrive when you have single point light sources. So at golden hour, when you have the sun, really good, because you get those lens flares right across the screen, as well as at night when you're filming with street lights or other lights around. But that doesn't mean that all of the lens flares are the exact same. So we went out the other day and did a bit of testing, testing each of these lenses in the same situation just to see what the lens flares are like. And in general, we found that the tighter the lens is, the more prominent the lens flares are. So the 50 and 75 tend to have much more prominent lens flares than 35 and 24. Now, that doesn't mean that the 24 millimeter doesn't have any lens flares at all. It definitely, definitely does. They're just not as pronounced as the 75. This comes down to personal preference and could actually be a benefit because maybe you're the type of person who doesn't like that intense lens flare look and wants something that's a little bit more subtle. Maybe going for like the wider lenses, the 35 and the 24 is a good option because they're not as kind of in your face as the rest of them. 
Like I mentioned before, all of these lenses have a minimum aperture of 1.8 except for the 24, which has a minimum aperture of 2.8. This means that all of these lenses are relatively good in low light conditions. Another unique characteristic of these lenses, which is also maybe a reason why you want to get one for yourself, is because they offer ovular bokeh. What it does is it takes the light behind you and instead of them just being kind of out of focus circles, they're out of focus ovals. It's so much more cinematic. The other day we went out to test and see what the bokeh looks like on each of the focal lengths so you guys can see what it looks like. As we can see, the 24 millimeter does have the least amount of bokeh. That can also be attributed to the fact that it is 2.8. Then it goes to the 35, which has a little bit more. Then the 50 obviously has a little bit more than the 35. And the 75 has the most out of all four of the lenses. Obviously the tighter lenses do have better bokeh and that is basically just because of the longer focal lengths. Now these are great lenses, don't get me wrong, but they are not the world's best lens. There are a few cons. So to start off with, I would say the minimum focal distance on these lenses is not the greatest. They are definitely not macro lenses at all. Um, it like This one has a minimum focal distance of 0.85 meters, which is about that long from the front of the lens, which can be kind of annoying. The first time that we ever used the 50 millimeter lens, we were actually shooting a car, and because of the minimum focal distance to get interiors of the car, it was a little tricky because Steven had to be in the back seat leaning all the way back just to get shots of the dashboard that were in focus. Next up, I would say that these lenses are not the sharpest. Now that doesn't mean that these lenses are like a mushy potato and they're unusable. They're definitely, definitely usable, but they aren't as tack sharp as other prime lenses. Obviously you can look at the footage we've been showing and see for yourself. Another con of these lenses is the fact that they are full manual. So getting focus is a little bit hard, especially when you have a lot of moving pieces, like it's on a Ronin and you're filming someone who's running it can be a little tricky. A few weeks ago, we were filming a video for Artlist and we were using these lenses and Steven was riding on a bike. I was on a one wheel with the camera on a Ronin. So we had a lot of moving pieces. When it came to doing the more technical shots, we actually moved over to an automatic lens because it took our number of attempts from being probably upwards of like 25 or 30 down to like three or four and definitely made it a whole lot easier because we didn't have to worry about focus. The final negative is the fact that these are crop sensor lenses. So we actually use these lenses on our Sony a7S three, which is a full frame camera. But in order to do so, we had to go into the settings and actually switch it into crop sensor mode. So if you are looking at using this on your full frame camera, that's just something to be aware of. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to final thoughts. If you're looking for a lens that offers a unique and artistic look, I would recommend these lenses 100%. They are extremely well built. They are awesome lenses and they're a ton of fun to use. But if you are going out expecting to buy these lenses as your main shooters, maybe you don't have any lenses for your camera at all, and this is gonna be your first lens, I wouldn't recommend that because they're not the best for everyday shooting. They have their they have their very strong points and they have their niche cases, which they're really good for, but for just everyday shooting, I wouldn't necessarily pick these lenses. Now you might be asking yourself, which one is for you? Now, I'm gonna cut straight to it. Gun to my head, if I only had to only choose one of these lenses to shoot with for the rest of my life, it would most likely be the 50 millimeter. That's just because it is the most versatile and it's not extremely tight like the 75, but it's also not extremely extremely wide like the 24. It also offers relatively prominent lens flares and a good amount of bokeh. So it's a it's a good all around lens. My second favorite lens out of all of these is probably the 75. That's just because I prefer a more compressed look with my footage and prefer shooting with a tighter focal length rather than shooting wide. All in all, every single one of these lenses is extremely solid. If you are at all interested in getting your hands on any of these, there's gonna be links down below. Also the 75 specifically, it is currently on sale for 25% off. So if you want to get this, you might want to hop on it pretty soon because that early bird pricing is not going to be around forever. Anyways, that is it for us comparing all of these lenses. I hope we kind of answered some questions for you as to which one you should get for your shooting style. It is all just kind of a personal preference thing. So if you're a person who likes to shoot wide, go with the wider ones. If you're someone who likes to shoot tight, go with the tighter ones. If you want to get every single one of them, do that too. I it, it's that's totally cool. Anyways, if you're new here, make sure you go up and follow us on Instagram at TMSProductions underscore. Also, go down, leave a like, subscribe, and a comment that always helps us out. Also, if you wanna help support the channel, there are going to be LUTs and presets linked down below. These are all the LUTs and presets that we use for all of our videos, so you can have them too. And if you've made it this far into the video, 
Thank you very much. And I wanna let you in on a little secret. We are launching an all new TMS editing challenge next week. So stay tuned. It's gonna be the next video on this channel and uh, it should be pretty fun. We've got some pretty cool uh, footage for you guys to edit. So we'll see you guys then. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Cut that out. Oh, dab on the haters, get them. Yeah, enough. What? Enough dabbing?